What up guys? So welcome back to Go Stick or Go Home. Uh, ironically today we're working on an automatic. It is my friend Alex's Kia Soul that you just saw here. We are lowering it, putting on a rather nice set of coilovers and the little ham sticker. He's, he's had some fun with the cosmetics on this car already. So we're putting a set of these on and we're putting those on with that and he's got some hub centric rings of course and a really nice expensive set of locking lugs so this is going to be the process of putting them on and what it looks like afterwards we have jacked up the front put it on some jack stands uh, when you get under here there aren't actual jack points on the chassis really so you just use this pad location right where the arm comes to and that i think is honestly what they intended because there is a little bump pad there uh, worked fine jacked it up put it on the stands and now we're taking the wheels off uh, these stock lug nuts are 21 millimeter, so just make sure to have a 21 mil socket available. Now that we have this jacked up, uh, we've come to realize that in order to unbolt the top of the McPherson strut, we have to take this plastic cowl off. And in order to take that off, we have to pop off the wiper blade because the wiper blade goes through it. That nut is a 14. And be careful when you do this, because when you put this wiper blade back on, you'll probably need to make sure that it's aligned properly. So, you know, get a picture of where it sits first if you need to. Maybe pay attention if your windshield's a little dirty to where the line is, you know, something like that. But otherwise, uh, this seems to be really the only pain in the butt thing about this. Assuming it does come off. Yeah. It should. I don't know how the hell else you're supposed to get to it. Oh, it looks like you just have to give it a little twist. Mm. Does it have like a locking edge? No, it's just splines. It's pretty standard. Alright, well. We'll probably have to get the other one too, dude. Uh, oh, son of a bitch, you do. <laughs> we'll be back. To get to watch Alex struggle a bit. <laughs> All right. So now that that, I slipped it underneath the back of my car so oh. that we wouldn't step on it. Yeah. Be smart about your workspace. All right. Now, lift. I guess. Uh, we should do like one side first, and then I'll have to turn it. Hold on. Okay. Well, I've got to say, uh, as slightly annoying as that is that's actually kind of a nice feature because it's, it means it's really easy to get to this the uh, wiper assembly so now that that's up we can start to remove the top of the McPherson's it's the wiper assembly and I will say uh, when you do this make sure to disconnect the wiper fluid line because it's just gonna pull on it if you don't and it's over on the passenger side but otherwise, this has been really easy. I guess that's the difference when you work on 20 plus year old cars versus something that's, you know, four, so. Down here, we're gonna get this strut out of here. Uh, we have to take the two bolts off for it mounting to the knuckle. This is for the brake line. There's a bolt over here for, I think this is the ABS sensor, and then the one bolt for the link. And other, other than that, it's just the three at the top. Uh, it is a 14, a 17, and I think a 12 for pretty much all these bolts. So far, it's basically been what I'm going to call Honda sizes. So, 
Did I leave 14 up there? Yeah. Oh, sorry. You good? So if it's on your impact gun, I, I don't care. God, it is nice to work on a car that I can actually just torque things off and I don't have to fight 20 years of rust. You, you have no idea. Yeah, the screen on black, is that okay? What? The yeah. Screen? Okay. Never used one of these fancy GoPros before. Uh, it just dims out because then you don't lose battery life. Because if you're recording in high def and high frame rate, it burns through the battery life anyway. And it's a little touch screen too. All right. So that's off, that's off, and this is off. And really it's just these two now, which can be the straight 17. Oh boy. Oh, it's not welded to it, it's a nut. I get you to let go. Okay. That was significantly easier. I don't know why it shouldn't be. Maybe, honestly, it might be the added weight of the socket. Um, I have a socket that my friend currently has that is a 19 mil, but it's like super beefy. And you use it to take off uh, the bolt for the accessory drive pulley because they're usually on there super fucking tight because they it's the spinning and the torque and all that. And uh, they make it super heavy so that it's like two pounds heavier, and then it just comes right off. Hmm. So, let's put all the bolts and nuts on the one side, and let's see if we can't do that a second time. Okay, so pro tip uh, when you take these off, uh, you want to put the impact apparently on the nut side of things because if you put it on the bolt it doesn't want to come off it shouldn't make a difference but it apparently does yeah that came right off doing it to the bolt took forever and it didn't want to let go so there's your answer Oh, the fact that that separates so easily, I, I envy you, sir. Granted, when I'm done with my car, everything will be new again anyway, but boy, that's nice. Might not be able to get to that one with a gun. Although these are going to come off way easier. Yeah. Do you want me down there to catch that or? No. I'm going to do it with this. Huh? 
exactly that. There we go. So now that we have everything unbolted, we have separated it from the knuckle, removed the mount for the brake line, the remount for the ABS, and disconnected it from the arm. Took the three bolts out up top. What is stopping you? It's the bolt on the one side. There we go. Just hanging on by tension. And the stock strut is out. Sorry about that. So, still in good shape. I mean, what? You said it was 2016? 18, actually. Oh, two years. Yep. Forget me. So, and uh, we're going to go do the other side, and then we'll put them both on at the same time. So, here we have the passenger side front coil over and a couple things to note a bit of info on how coilovers work in general or it's just, this works in general so for a McPherson strut type you can both adjust the height at which this bottom mount piece sits you can move this up and down and this is the uh, locking ring for the bottom and you can also adjust the actual uh, spring height and travel distance with that by with these two and compressing the spring a bit uh, which technically is also preload but generally that's how you adjust the height the reason you want to keep both of these in mind is that <clears throat> if you adjust this all the way up and you know you slam the car but you don't change the the travel distance of the actual strut or the suspension of the spring if it's slammed and, and the car is basically sitting almost exactly where the tire is and the fitment's really nice, here's the problem. Your suspension can still move the amount that it can stock. So when your car leans or whatever, your tire's gonna come up and probably hit the fender or dig into something, uh, which is not what you want. So you wanna be aware of both of these. Um, you, want, you probably, you, you want to coordinate the use of both you know a little bit of this to kind of get it closer to where you want to and then if it looks like there's a concern for the tire contacting the fender or anything in there start adjusting this uh, instead so uh, otherwise this is pretty straightforward uh, these do have adjustable dampening there's a piece down there you can stick in to adjust the dampening a bit on how dampening works uh, when you adjust dampening it's not a linear scale so if you have three full rotations on your dampening adjustment it's not soft is you know all the way to the one end of the rotation and super stiff is all the way to the other one the first couple of turns or two and a half turns are basically going to be useless on that dampening adjustment and really for fine tuning it between softer and stiffer riding dampening wise is going to happen within that last turn or half turn or quarter turn of of the entire adjustment scale because of, because of how uh, dampening works internally with the fluid <clears throat> so when you go to put these on um, it's pretty straightforward we're essentially up here we're just gonna hang it uh, we're gonna bolt these in I'm not gonna bother bolting in the like the bracket for the brake line or the ABS or even the sway bar link because once we sit this back down on the ground uh, we're going to be lifting this back up to adjust that and there's really no point in mounting those back up until we have this sitting where we want it but otherwise uh, this install has been really easy so far and this is what it looks like underneath so we're going to push this up. Uh, this is probably too low, but we will find out just depending on where it's supposed to sit. So we have both sides on. 
on these. Uh, if you'll notice, this is sticking down farther than it was before, and that's because if you have these all the way up, it's way, way too low. Um, I get, I'm estimating that where this sits is about accurate to where it's going to sit stock. Uh, we will find out. Uh, I would rather have it be too much and then lower it more than lower it too much and have it sit on the fender or something uh, and, you know, possibly damage the car. Uh, other than that, we are now putting uh, this wheel on to make sure that it fits. Uh, we have bumped in one of his hub-centric rings with my mallet and we're gonna torque it on. Uh, I He'll probably go and order a set of aluminum hub-centric rings because I don't I don't like plastic. Uh, there have been issues under under hard conditions where the plastic might deform due to heat or with brakes or on a racetrack or whatever, which I don't really think he's going to take this thing to a racetrack, but still. And uh, they were extremely, extremely tight, which tells me the plastic was a little, little bit oversized. Uh, and I think it would probably just be smarter to, when he can, just order a set of aluminum ones and be done with it. Uh, but otherwise, this has been extraordinarily easy. Uh, it's been Honda size bolts so far, 12, 10, four, or 10, 12, 14, 17. Uh, the stock lugs are 21s, and the really nice set of aftermarket lugs that he has are, are 19s and this is what they look like this is kicks k-i-c-s and these are actually really nice so alex this looks hella fresh like this this looks like really good man um that is we're still gonna jack this up and uh, reattach things on the inside and uh, kind of adjust uh, where it sits a bit and all that but that ride height is phenomenal I mean that looks so good compared to stock um, this is this is gonna be awesome uh, pro tip if you lower it this much uh, be sure to uh, when we dropped it, uh, because we had it, you know, we put the jack stands there and we jacked it up using uh, the point of the suspension where the lower arm bolts to the body, um, it sat low enough that the plastic cowl under this sat on the jack. So I had to get my other jack and jack it up over here in order to slide that one out the front. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, if you do go low enough, it will actually sit on the jack. Um, if you've lowered cars enough, I didn't think it was going to sit that far down. That's why I didn't uh, worry about it the first time. But anyway, uh, this looks really good. And now we just have to make sure and bolt everything back up and do a little bit of an adjustment. And then we'll do the rear. After running to the store and getting the right size hub centric rings, uh, they accidentally gave him uh, 57.1 rings instead of 67.1 and uh, he just called them and we went back and uh, they it was good service they just came in and exchanged it worked worked out and these have gone on perfectly uh, as you can see this side is back on the right way and over on the driver's side just to give you guys a look before we button this back up everything is bolted back in place it's clean, it's proper. Uh, I have added a little bit of ride height back in to this and taken away some in the spring so that I can limit spring travel a little bit while still lowering the car because if I lower it using just this and it maintains the same amount of suspension travel, uh, it's likely to go up into the fender liner or the actual fender itself. Just to give you a bit on these locking lugs, uh, these are kicks. Uh, they are Japanese. It's a 20 pack, they're two piece style. So you have 
let me take this apart. So you have together and then it unscrews. This is the actual lug itself. Uh, this is the lock section. This is the lock one. Others just have hex pattern here that I think is a 17. And then you put that on and then you put this cover on by hand. And these are really nice because the cover that you put on by hand uh, does not get worn down. So all the wear on the lug that normally happens uh, is kept non-visible. So this is really great if you want it to continue to look nice and not have to continuously replace your lug nuts. Uh, I think they're made of uh, molly steel or something like that. Uh, there, it's it's a really nice piece. And here we have the rear of the car. It is a separated spring and shock. And it does not appear that this has a toe adjustment at all because it is one solid uh, dead axle all the way across. I think that's what it's called. And uh, that goes straight into the hub. So I don't think there's a toe adjustment on this at all, uh, which makes my job easy. And I'm picking up what you're putting down, Kia, because it's two bolts for the top here, and I don't even have to gain access to the trunk to drop this out. Ain't that nice? So this is going to be one bolt down underneath, two up there, and then I'm pretty sure the spring just comes off. So other than that, the rear, I mean, I might need to, I might need to pull the caliper off to make a little distance for when I drop it. But other than that, I mean, this is like the easiest thing in the universe. And I'm, I, I very much like. This is the stock rear strut, right? And up here we have the top hat with the bolt and that comes off and you have the washer and all that stuff and then there's that is the reason the reason that you need to take that off of that one is because it has to go on this one because otherwise there's no way to mount this to the car so you need to preserve the stock top hat go onto this strut and then it goes back in the car so just an update again not too hard uh, you want you'll want an adjustable wrench to go around this little top bit right there and then the nut that goes on that is a 17 you just crank away so that's again very simple very easy you see here i have removed the aftermarket rubber grommet or poly grommet that came with this and i've put the stock one back on uh, or on this one because there isn't a top hat section for that rubber grommet to go into so we use the stock one instead and we save the rubber grommet for a later time just in case and these tighten up top with an allen key this is what size is this this is a four looks like and uh and then you need the wrench and you do the same thing to put it back on and then you mount it in the car so just to give you a visual here these are the stock springs these are the sf springs it's sf right yeah sf racing springs uh for their kit uh, that is a good solid oh uh four inches less but they have this to go with it and this adds height uh, depending on how much you want to lower it by because this is the adjustable section for the height on this now if i do this and sit it next to it that is noticeably closer it's still lower but that's the point um, something to note uh, when you pull these out you want to take the fat end here and pull the rubber piece out and you want to put it 
on the new spring so that when it sits up in the stock position, it has the pad that should be there. Uh, you do not want to move the small end over because this is the perfect di diameter and that is also a rubber pad on there already, so leave it off. With this, how you mount this in the car, this goes on the bottom and this will come installed. This will be in here with this screwed in. Unbolt it, drop it out, take this, put it up through the hole, and essentially this bolts up into that and holds this in place so that you have a, a secured location to mount the spring and then you can adjust the height. Um, honestly, I like it. It is extremely easy to do and it's pretty straightforward. There aren't any really tricky parts to it. Uh, this is an absolute pleasure to work on. So, come back in a minute. This is what it looks like all bolted up. And the way that I gauged what height to put this at, uh, it's also almost all the way uh, down because I've put that, I've put the spring height almost all the way up. In fact, it is all the way up. Uh, the, how I gauged uh, where to put this at is essentially I jacked this whole assembly up until the spring was was flush and was touching and then I adjusted this down to match um, so that when it sits it will compress but when it's all the way down it's it's even something I want to point out for you guys when you go to bolt this adjustment into place uh, there's room for it to slide so you don't, you're not like, I'm not, you know, how do you get this centered? Well, when you put it in, it comes right to the edge of those holes. And if you can line it up all the way around with the edge of those holes, it's centered. So it works out actually quite well. And you don't need to like kill yourself tightening up the bolt that comes to the bottom of this because it's not really gonna move side to side very much. Make it, make it tight but you don't need to like crank it down to break the bolt because it's because it's a f plate that fastens to the bottom of this. It's not gonna have the same locking tension that it just a hole would. One last little piece. That bolt on the bottom there to that plate to this, it is a 22 millimeter. And I would recommend actually getting a 22 millimeter socket to put on a breaker bar so that you can tighten it down. It makes it way easier. Uh, I happen to have one, but there's your piece of info. So here we have Alex tightening down. Nice flamingo underwear. Thank you. Uh, here we have Alex tightening down the, is this the last wheel or do you still need to do? I still need to do the other one. Okay. So tightening down the lug nuts before we put the covers on the rest of them. Uh, this is what those spikes look like in the wheel. And uh, because of the depth of this wheel, they are far more subtle than on something with uh, a different offset or at least a different uh, design. But otherwise, I think this looks excellent. Uh, that back corner seems to be ever so slightly higher than the other side. Uh, we will find out when we drive it if it settles, and if not, we will adjust it later. But for now, we are done. And I think that looks pretty banging. Uh, he wants to do possibly some fender flares and a couple other touches, uh, maybe an intake, something like that, just to get a little more sound out of it. Uh, but honestly, I like this car. It's not bad. What do you think, Alex? Okay. See you next time, guys.